two times today I've tried to start this video and during both of the attempts the building alarm for the building next door kept going off. I don't understand why an apartment building would have a building alarm but they got one and it goes woo 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 so this is a this and that I think this will be TAT number 14 13 or 14 I got a couple things I want to talk to you about in regards to a couple videos that I've done. Got a couple new topics to talk about. And as soon as I come back, we'll get started. Provided we don't have any building alarms going on. Hey! Hello there. You people amaze me. I, I'm so proud of my, my family, my audience. I get some of the best questions from you folks. And I'm talking about particularly the video that I did the other day about when your partner's not on board. If you look at the comment section, you see that we got lots of conversation going on, lots of dialogue. And then plus I got a lot of emails from people that you know, one that wanted to really talk about this. This is a very important topic. When your partner is not on board. You know, there are a lot of people that have come here without their partners. And it's kind of, a lot of ways it's kind of sad. But something that really stuck out to me, I have two friends that, just if I can find it here, I'm going to read it to you. in my email. Oh no. I'm going to read to you off my, my laptop that I have sitting here. I have a friend, John T. I'm not giving his last name, but John T. and Jeff M. You guys know who you are. Uh, this is in response to the video about when your partner's not on board. And I like what these two guys have to say, so I want to share it with you, okay? John says, I think it's true some see moving abroad as an escape from tough circumstances. I feel that temptation myself sometimes. If one is tired of work or has relationship issues or suffers from anxiety or depression, the Ecuador escape is tempting. But maybe self-healing is needed before an objective decision is possible. Chances are you will carry baggage with you and the happy escape will become a bitter disappointment. Boy, I tell you what, I could talk all day long about that. Jeff M. replied, uh, and I want to read what he wrote. Good point, though I think it applies more to people whose motivation consists mainly in what they are leaving than to those of us whose motivation consists mainly in the positive attributes of the place to which we are going. Moving to a new country is not the cure for psychological problems within oneself, or within a relationship. True enough, but sometimes getting a fresh start with a clean slate is just what the doctor ordered. And in my case, a number of practical matters come to bear in my wish to move. He had that in parentheses, such as economics and the low cost of living in other countries. So both these guys brought a good points. You know, you, they're I, you know, I, I, I came here without a partner. I didn't have one to bring with me. I knew, you know, my genie, my friend back home who passed away after I got here, there's no way I was going to even going to ask her to, to come with me because uh, she was a caregiver, caregiver for her brother. And I, she just didn't want to, she had too much family there in, in the States and couldn't, couldn't leave it, you know, but uh, it worked out for me, but I'll tell you, I, folks, I, I feel for a lot of you who have partners who uh, don't want to make this move. Moving to another country is not necessarily an escape. You know, we all we all have freedom. We have the, the freedom to choose where we want to spend our retirement. You know, I... You know, and, and there are a lot of circumstances that come into play about why we want to go to another country. 
unfortunately, the way things are in the United States right now, with the way things are, I mean, it, it's, it, it can be an escape. I, I look at it like it's just a temporary reprieve. I'm, I'm kind of away from that mess back home. One of these days I may go back and be, it's starting to look more and more like I want. If I decide that I don't want to stay in Ecuador, I can, I can go to another country. But, and, and now I have a partner here whom I love very much, but I don't know if she's going to be willing to pack up and leave her roots behind and go with me, especially at my age. Who knows, you know? But these two guys, they, they brought up some good points here, you know, and moving to another country is not the cure for psychological problems. I, I like that statement, Jeff. You know, I tell people all the time, leave those problems at the gate when you get on the airplane. Leave all that stuff behind because there is no excuse for bringing it with you. The other thing I wanted to talk about is I... I got a couple of emails from a follower who asked me about, we got into this discussion about taxis, riding taxis. I'm, folks, I'm going to tell you right now, me personally, I don't like riding taxis here. I have taxis that I'll ride with because I, I feel comfortable with them. I have their cards. I can call them if I need them. But for me to just stand on a street corner and hail down a taxi, I don't feel comfortable with them because I've been in too many of them that drive recklessly, carelessly, with no respect for me whatsoever. They play loud music. They have their radio up real loud. They, and you know, they, they, they're bullies on the road and they scare me. They just freaking scare me and I don't want to be with them. But, if you have to ride a taxi, you know, then the big, the big issue that the, what I got into a discussion with this guy about is how much does it cost? I tell everybody, don't ask a taxi driver how much is the fare. If you do, you do that before you get in the car. The taxis here in Monta don't use meters. They have them in the car. You see them in the car, but they don't use them like they do in Cuenca. And I think they use them in Quito. In Cuenca, you can look up and you can see exactly what your charge is going to be. But I mentioned in one of my Cuenca videos that I honestly think that some of the taxi drivers in Cuenca purposely get lost while the meter is running, <laughs> you know. I can't prove that that's true, but that's the way I felt a couple of times. So I have a slight case of hiccups. Um, so anyway, here in Monta, your your average taxi ride for expats that come here and move around in the Marcia Lago area, Barbasquil, Ciudad del Mar, your taxi fare is going to be anywhere from two dollars, I mean a dollar fifty, up to three bucks. Your average taxi, my average taxi that I spend, is a dollar fifty. A lot of times I just give them two bucks, especially if they were courteous and they gave me a good ride. Two bucks, you know? They charge extra at night, so it's like a $3 fare during the day would be $3 at night. But I hate to say this, but it's real easy to get gringo by a taxi driver because you ask them, go out to West. They'll, they'll almost automatically say $2 or $3. When normally it would have been a dollar fifty, if you had just paid them a dollar fifty, they'd probably say thank you, and you'd say, you know, uh, buen dia. So, just when you get here, I'm speaking to the person that wrote to me about this. That when you get here, think a dollar fifty to start, and then I guess, you know. See what happens. If it's more than a dollar fifty, you're, they're going to tell you. Okay, I don't think taxi drivers will just outright screw you out of your money. 
But I know that when when I first came here, I said, "Cuánto es?" You know, "Cuánto cuesta?" How much? You know. And they all said two dollars. From the mall to here, which is a five minute walk, they would say two dollars. I could have easily gotten away with a dollar and a quarter. Now I pay a dollar fifty from the mall to here. And you might be saying, well, Don, why would you take a taxi from the mall to here if it's only a five minute walk? Well, when you're carrying two bags of beer and two bottles of wine, it seems like a 50 minute walk. So I take the taxi. I hope that answers your question. The other question that that gentleman had was, was, well, I don't know that it was that person, but another person asked me about eSIMs. So apparently, I don't know for those of you that don't know, an eSIM is a SIM card that's embedded on the motherboard of your telephone. Not every telephone has them. My phone has them. My, uh, my iPhone 10R has them. The 10X has them. The newer iPhones have them. The newer Android phones have them. The dual SIMs, you know. Uh, the question that the person was asking me is if Claro uh, supports the eSIM. Quite honestly, I don't think they do. I may have to double up on that and find out for sure, but I sent an interpreter to some friends of mine to help them go get their phone set up, and they went to Claro and they ended up going to Movistar because they couldn't use the eSIM. And, and I believe that was a Claro thing. I can't imagine Claro not using eSIMs. And maybe if they don't now, maybe I'm sure they will very soon. Claro is a first class phone company here. And so is Movistar. So I do know for sure that Movistar supports the eSIM and you can use it. Those of you that don't know, with a dual SIM setup on your phone, you can keep your original SIM card for your United States calls so you can pay all those international fares, fees. And then you have an eSIM, a second SIM that you can use for your local phone. And that's what the eSIM is for. Okay, the another thing that I want to talk to you about was uh, <laughs> another another Google Voice thing. Uh, this lady wrote to me, Kathy B. She's the one that asked me about the eSIMs, and so just after that, um, she wanted to know, uh, in, you mentioned in a recent video that you will not download the Google Voice app on your phone. Is, is there a security or other issue with doing so, or is that just your personal preference? It's my personal preference, Kathy, because <clears throat> I, the, my U.S. phone number, the only calls I ever get on that phone number are solicitation calls. It's all spam. I don't want those calls on my phone. I don't want my day to be interrupted by those calls. You know, and I also found out that I couldn't make a call to my Google Voice from my phone. Now, maybe that was a setting issue. I don't know. You know, configuration issue, but I, I don't know about that. But I didn't I didn't want it on my phone because I don't want to be bothered. I mean, I get multiple calls a day on that phone. I had that phone number for 13 years. And I get multiple calls on it every day, and they're all BS calls. You know, extended warranties. You know, my financing is better than their financing, you know. Sign up for this healthcare program, you know. So I, I didn't, I don't, I just don't want it on my phone. You can put it on your phone and possibly take calls on it, but you'll have to do your own research to figure out how to do that. The only time I really use my old phone number is when I need to call one of you guys and I just hook up my headset here and I log into my Google voice number in the US so I don't have to call internationally. And I end up just using voice over IP and a call from my U.S. phone number. Or I need to get a code from my bank. That's the only time I use it. 
So I hope that answered those questions. Now, the, the last thing I want to talk about, people tell me often that they have a X amount of dollars to retire on. And they write to me and they tell me, I got 300,000 in stocks and bonds, I got 600,000 in this, and I got $300,000 in cash. Can I retire in Ecuador? Well, yeah, of course you can. You could probably retire on that and live very comfortably here. But, but to me, more importantly is what people really ought to be asking them because you know, it's cheap to live here. It's very cheap to live here. That kind of money, this, guy, this particular person wrote to me, if I did my math right, they have probably about a uh, million and a half, two million dollars. My question to them was, you know, well, what are you getting dividends? You know, what kind of income are you getting from this investment? You know, there's no question that you'll be able to live on that. But my question for you is, what are you going to do when you get here? Okay. I sat down at breakfast this morning and I started thinking, you know, retirement has to do with ceasing to work at your job. So I'm retired, but I work at least part time talking about myself. I can't imagine not working. I speak about myself. I work on my craft, which is photography and videography, and I work on this channel. But what would I do if I didn't do these things? Monta is a beach city. There are all kinds of water-related activities at your disposal here, like swimming, fishing off the giddies, windsurfing, laying out under the sun, collecting cancer cells, taking walks, surfing at some of the better surfing beaches like Ayampi or San Lorenzo. But aside from water-related activities, what else can you do? I came up with some ideas. And the first one, Yes, you can golf. There is a golf course in Monte Cristi. I'm going to go up there Saturday and I'm going to do a video on that golf course. I'm going to take my drone. I'm going to do some aerial footage of it. I'm going to interview some people and I'm going to provide it for you folks. It's the only golf course I know of in this part of Ecuador. I'm sure there's probably some golf courses in Quito. I don't know that there's one in Cuenca. Don't even care if there's one in Waikil because I wouldn't go there anyway. But there is a golf course that's a 10 minute taxi ride from Monta. But the other things that I came up with are, you can take up golf. You can take Spanish lessons, which I encourage everyone to do. You can paint. There are people here that paint. I, so we have some really wonderful artists here that do painting. And I don't know about any instructors right here in Monta, but they're there, there's a great instructor in San Clemente. Her name is Moya. I hope you're still teaching painting, Moya. I don't know if you're listening or not. She may not even be a subscriber, but uh, I think I know her through Facebook. Moya Foley, I think is her name. And she teaches painting. Well, that's a, you know, a 50 cent bus ride from here. You could go up there and take painting, you know? You can explore the rainforest up at Pacochi. That's a great thing to do. You can volunteer. We can all volunteer. You can start a business. Boy, but if you do, make it a business that can cater to the locals as well as whoever else your customers are. I actually wanted to start an export business, but then I thought, nah, I'm too busy doing all this other stuff. You can open a restaurant. Folks, we need a good Greek restaurant here. Somebody come here and open up a Greek restaurant so I can get a euro. You can take cooking classes. There's some great cooking classes here. I have a friend that owns a little coffee shop here called Happy's and she took baking classes. You can join a fitness center. There's a brand new fitness center in the mall that just opened. I'll do a video on it. I promise you, I'll do a video on it next week. I'll get my friend Carlos to go with me and he, he can speak for me and I'll ask and get permission to do some video inside the fitness center. Brand new, super state-of-the-art fitness center right here in Monta. You can play tennis. There's two tennis clubs here. You can go whale watching, of course, during the whale season. Down, you go to Port Cayo, and there's a boat that'll take you out right on top of the whales. You can learn to sew. There are, you can buy sewing materials here, dirt cheap, and learn to sew. I'd like, me personally, I would like to learn how to sew and make a shirt. Don't ask me why. I, I just do, okay? Get into photography. 
If you want to learn photography, come talk to me. I'll teach you. We'll go out and we'll do workshops and we'll go out and do, you know, photo jobs, you know. We'll, we'll create our own assignments and go, go do them. And then I'll teach you how to, to run your camera, and manage your camera, and manage your shot and turn it into a work of art. I'll do that for you. You only have to pay me. Well, you might have to buy me lunch or breakfast at Dulce and Promoso. Start a YouTube channel. Start a YouTube channel. Don't be dorky, okay? You can start a YouTube channel and do like I do. Just tell it like it is. You'll have so many fans, you won't be able to stand it. Open a Facebook page, okay? I'll tell you what we need here, folks. Somebody come here, please, and open up a Facebook page and start a marketplace, okay? Because Facebook marketplace sucks. And the reason why is because I get kicked off of it, like so many other expats here. And then Facebook tells me, okay, it's fixed, you can get back on now. You may have to log off and log back on. Nah, it doesn't work, still don't work. But that's, that's stuff that I came up with. I had something else here I wanted to read to you. Lady said, I got a kick out of this. She said, enjoy your video today regarding partners who don't want to move to Ecuador. I'm happily single with two dogs who will gladly follow me wherever I go, whether it's to the bathroom or to Ecuador. Kind of reminds me of that's so cute. Fido and Fluffy won't follow her to the bathroom. Yeah, that's so cute. I had a wife that followed me to the bathroom because she wanted to know if I was in there snorting coke or something, you know. But anyway, it's nice to know that you got puppy doggies that'll follow you to the bathroom. Uh, so I don't have an opinion on topic, but I found the discussion interesting nevertheless. And the chief wanted to ask me about the eSIM stuff and then also about the, the Google Boy stuff. So anyway, that's it, folks. I just wanted to throw that in today. I can't think of anything else to talk about. You're a great audience. I love you very much. If you have questions, feel free to email them to me. If you want me to talk to you, give me your phone number and I'll call you. I'll call you from my Google Voice and I'll answer any questions that you have. If you, if you email me and I don't respond to you right away, just please be patient, okay? I'll get to you eventually. And that's it. I can't think of anything else. And thank God I made it through without the building alarm next door going off. Ciao, ciao. So I go all the way to Lowe's to get this plywood. Guy comes out, loads it up, scratches the piss out of my tail light cover. It's unreal what people do these days. I don't know, someday they're gonna be getting a letter ruined.